What is up YouTube and welcome to another video. In a previous video we've set up a HashiCorp vault on Kubernetes. If you haven't seen that video check the link down in the description. There's a link to the video, link to the source code so you can follow along. Now in that video we've taken a look at the concepts of vault, the encryption algorithm, deploying it and getting it up and running but most importantly the configuration of how to get um, something that is as close to production as possible. So we've got a standalone um, vault instance up and running. Now now in this video we're going to take a look at something that's really important and that's end-to-end -end encryption. When you want to run a, a vault even in development, um, I highly recommend you always make sure that there's TLS encryption enabled so all the traffic coming in and out of the vault is fully encrypted. Now you can bring your own TLS certificates or we can use a utility to generate our own just for demo purposes but it's important that TLS is always enabled end-to-end. -end. So without further ado, let's go. So if you're new to this um, channel and series, um, this is the Docker development YouTube series. Everything I do in this um, on this video is on GitHub. I'll drop a link down below so you can um, access the source code and follow along. So in our previous video, everything we've done to get the vault up and running is under HashiCorp vault and it's in the server folder. So all the YAML implementation that we're going to be using in this video to get TLS enabled will also be in this folder. But I firstly want to talk about getting the SSL certificate. So I've created a TLS folder and in here, in here I have a SSL generate self-signed text file. So I've gone and opened up this text file here and all the steps that I'm about to do is listed in here. So you can kind of just copy paste them and use them. First thing we want to do is um, just go to the vault directory. So I'm going to CD into that directory of the TLS. And here's all the files that we're going to be um, using to generate this. Now, because I'm running on Windows and I'm sure a lot of you will be running on Windows, um, using Docker containers is the easiest way to just get these Linux tools um, that we're going to be using. So I'm going to run a Debian Buster container and I'm just going to mount this folder that I'm in currently into the container and then we can go ahead and install all the utilities. Um, so you can see this line over here, app get update, app get install. I'm going to install curl. I'm going to use curl to download these two utilities, the Cloudflare SSL utilities. And then I'm going to go ahead and add them to my path. So I'm just going to copy paste this whole block into here and get that installed. Find running containers even on Windows, really easy to get quick access to Linux environments where I can quickly run these kind of utilities and throw them away. So once I've installed that, I'm going to copy paste these next couple of lines and I'll just talk you through them. This one will generate a CA certificate. So we're going to go ahead and create this and then we're going to copy paste this next block. Now, this next block is very important because we're, we're using that um, CA certificate to generate our certificate that we're going to be using for end to end encryption. The host name is very important yeah, um, because that's when Depending on how you've installed your vault, the service accounts and the services that you've used, you'll need to define these host names. So otherwise um, your certificate will not be valid for that host. Now because our namespace is called vault example, our service is called vault example, it's important that we have a vault example um, dot vault example dot service defined as a host name. So I'm going to go ahead and create create that that's going to generate our certificate so if i do ls you can see all our certificates have been created here on the file system so the next bit if we take a look in the server folder um, if you followed the the vault guide previously of getting it up and running tls is not enabled on that one so i just recently enabled it so what we've going to what are we going to be doing is putting our um, secrets that we've just created into the secret yaml so you can see here there's three files that we need so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and delete um, all these entries that are in here and what we're going to do is we need to base 64 our keys that we have if you brought your own keys you're going to base 64 them convert them to a single line and paste them in here so to do that i'm just copying this command we're going to go cat CAPM into base64 and then put that onto a single line. So then you want to carefully copy out this from there all the way up to there. Copy that and that's going to be my um, CAPM. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that over there. Should come through as a single line. Um, then I'm just going to go ahead and do the same for the PEM as well as the key.pem.
All right, so once you're done, you should see your three files with three single lines of the content that's basically base64. And then you go ahead and save that file. Now, remember, if you bring your own um, certificates, it's important to not check this into GitHub. Always put like a git ignore or apply the file and delete the file off your machine. This is very important that you keep these out of Git. I'm going to check these in for you guys as an example. They will expire probably a year from now. Um, but you can go ahead and apply these if you're having any trouble creating your own. So that's the TLA secret created. Now, the next part we're going to be looking at um, is the stateful set itself. So if we look at the stateful set. Um, this is the basic deployment for the vault. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a volume. So we've got under the volume section, I've created a volume name TLA secret. That's the volume there. And then if we go down to the containers, we'll find that we have a volume mount with the same name and it's mounting it to slash vault slash SSL. So SSL certs is going to be mounted to this part. The next bit we want to do is go over the, to the config map and make sure that we enable SSL. So enabling it's quite simple. You just pop these two lines and that'll point to your PIM and your key.pim. Remember to rename this if your um, files are different. And also we're going to say we want a minimum version of one, two in here for TLS. Then we're going to hop back, back to the stateful set. And the next um, part that we're going to need to do is if we go to the environment variables, we have to make sure that the vault address and the vault API address are set to HTTPS. Okay. Otherwise, um, we won't be able to use the, the addresses correctly because we're expecting SSL. So when the vault starts, it's not going to be expecting any traffic other than SSL. You'll get errors. So the last bit that's very important is the readiness probe and the liveliness probe. You have to configure them to use the HTTPS scheme. Once you have done this, the stateful set, the config map and the TLS secret file are the three things you need in order to get SSL enabled. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is deploy this and see how we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new namespace called vault example. Then what I'm going to do is apply the YAML file of the server. So everything we've just done, I'm going to go ahead and deploy that. So we want to do a get pods. We'll see that our pod is initializing. So it's coming up. And what we're going to want to do is also go ahead and initialize the vault. So I'm going to get an exec into it and say vault operator init. That's going to give me my unsealed keys and the root token that we've talked about in the previous video. Now what I want to go ahead and do is unseal the vault. So I'm going to say vault unseal, I'm going to pass in the first key, grab the second key, unseal. Third time lucky. Sealed is false, so it's um, ready to be used. Once the vault is unsealed, if we do kubectl get pods, we can see the vault should be ready. So the readiness probe and the liveliness probe is now working. That means that the readiness and liveliness probe is talking to the vault over TLS. So TLS is now working. If TLS does not work and your certificate's invalid, um, the readiness probe will and the liveliness probe will fail and it'll keep restarting your your vault so to confirm this is all working i can get a terminal inside of my vault i can say vault operator and i can say key status and we can see it's trying to make a call over https but i'm not logged in so i can say vault login and just copy this root token so now I'm logged in. We can also do a kubectl um, logs on that pod and then we can see TLS is enabled. So you can see how simple that was to get TLS end-to-end -end encryption enabled. So I highly recommend, even if you're just playing around with Vault, if you're serious about using Vault, make sure that you always have TLS encryption enabled end-to-end. -end. So next up, I've got a super, super exciting video to show you guys. Basically, I wanna show you how to inject secrets into applications without the applications being Vault aware. So application is just looking for a secret on disk and we're gonna take a look at the vault injector concept to securely inject using the vault API secrets into the application end-to-end -end encrypted without the application even knowing and so stay tuned guys hope you enjoy this one like and subscribe and until next time peace